Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag 15 januari 2015, 2016. De eerste keer dat ik me vergis. Dit is het bulletin van vrijdag. Vandaag weer een uitzending waar ik beperkt de tijd voor had. Uit tijdgebrek kwam ik daardoor op een aardige reportage over het zo populair gebleken onderwerp van de nummerstations. Hij is in het Engels, maar dat mag hem volgens mij de pret niet drukken. Er is enige kans dat de lange uitzending vanavond eenmalig komt te vervallen. In elk geval zal dat ook eenmalig een vereenvoudigde versie zijn van die lange uitzending. Have you ever heard of number stations? Now, the first time I heard about number stations was a number of years ago when someone pointed me to a number station broadcasting from Russia. Now, what is a number station? Well, part of the reason they're so interesting is because nobody knows. What better person to investigate them than Sam? Regardless of what you think of modern pop music, the airwaves of your local station are probably more listenable than one of the, incredibly, most listened to stations on the internet. Why so remarkable? Because the catchily titled Russian station MDZHB, formerly and better known as UVB76, broadcasts almost nothing except this. Yes, this extraordinarily creepy station has been blasting beeps on shortwave radio almost non-stop since 1982, and in recent years has become something of an online sensation, picking up at times 200,000 regular listeners. We say it broadcasts beeps almost non-stop, because every so often, once every few years, it goes crazy. Broadcasting the greatest hits of Swan Lake... and occasional code words or spells of silence. UZB 76 UZB and it's inspired conspiracy theorists online, some of whom suggest it's part of a secret radar system or perhaps even part of some doomsday device. So what's the truth behind UVB-76? Well, more educated theories abound. Paul Beaumont is co-owner of Enigma 2000, a radio group dedicated to tracking radio oddities and so-called number stations. More on those in a minute. He thinks the station may be a so-called dead hand system, which is just about as spooky as it sounds. Maybe a worse scenario, a nuclear war was to start, then buzzing would, would stop and the message was changed and alert uh, people with a need to know as to what to do, where to go, or um, you know, look for an alert system or something. It's something that's left over from the Cold War Happily buzzes away because nothing's happening and uh, occasionally passes a message. So UVB-76 could be part of a forgotten nuclear Armageddon communications network. But what about the occasional voice messages? Well, the station's location holds some clues. For most of its life, it broadcast out of a site at Povarovo, 40 kilometres outside Moscow but changed locations in 2010. A group of urban explorers later broke into the site, which was described as an abandoned but guarded military base. And they found a logbook suggesting the station occasionally broadcasts military orders. And on some level, it's still being used, because it carried on broadcasting after the base closed. But UVB-76 isn't the only radio oddity. Two more well-known and equally scary examples broadcast out of Russia known by fans as Squeaky Wheel and The Pip. For many years, the West also ran these stations. One, known as the Lincolnshire Poacher and believed to be run by the British out of Cyprus, broadcast nothing but strings of numbers and this. 
A nightmarish rendition of the folk song after which it was named. Another station, Cherry Ripe, broadcast from Australia and Guam and had a similar function, and both ran until the late 2000s. So just why are these stations still around in the digital age? Paul says that despite being old technology, the joy of shortwave radio is that it's very difficult to track. Well, the number stations are an untraceable way of um, different governments contacting their agents abroad, um, some I suppose in hostile countries and such like, um, for the purpose of giving them uh, messages. Whilst it would be easy to they use um, the internet to um, instruct virtually anywhere in the world. That will always leave a trace as to where the user is, whereas somebody just sitting um, anywhere you like, really, anywhere you can imagine with a shortwave receiver, taking down uh, number groups, wouldn't particularly uh, be traceable and may not actually draw any attention to themselves. We set out to get an official answer on the subject. We contacted the National Code Centre in Bletchley Park, who couldn't help, but then contacted British Intelligence at GCHQ on our behalf. They, tantalisingly, responded that they didn't feel it's appropriate to go into this subject in an interview. Which is infuriating, obviously, and we wish we could give you an answer. But hey, that would kind of spoil the fun. And it also means that whatever the covert purposes of these pre-digital relics of the Cold War are, they're considered important enough to keep at least a few of them working, beeping forlornly into the night. Four, five, six. In Britain, a man who tore himself away from his high-tech computer and tuned into his low-tech shortwave radio stumbled upon an entire universe of radio stations that the public is not supposed to hear or even know about. They're called number stations, a holdover from the Cold War, but still very much alive and transmitting. Peter Rosen of our Salt Lake City station, KUTV, reports. They're out there. We found this one frequency. And Somewhere. They're all encrypted. We can't read or understand what they're saying. And at our request, amateur radio enthusiasts John Lloyd and Glenn Worthington I heard them 30, 40 years ago. Are listening. The number stations sound very different from any other transmission. To numbers stations. Eight, two, one. Shortwave uh, broadcasts yeah. of numbers or letters spoken or tapped out in Morse code. TNT. No call yeah, letters, man. no explanation. Three, nine, seven, I kept one. running across very odd transmissions. On the other side of the Atlantic, Akeen Fernandez is listening to. I used to monitor them basically all night. During the 90s, every day of the week, he became obsessed. He says it's understood that number stations broadcast to a very particular audience. Number stations are a perfect way of anonymous communication. Spies. We don't know where they're coming from, no. Some spy network or something. We're definitely talking about governments. Top secret messages from Cuba, from Israel's Mossad, from the CIA. It sounds like it's coming from the U.S. Maybe that was coming out of Langley, Virginia. I don't know. What stopped the Lincolnshire poacher is supposedly on a British base in Cyprus broadcasting to the Middle East. He's on the air every day, clockwork. These broadcasts began routinely during the Cold War. They're translated only with something called a one-time pad, a dictionary for a language spoken just once. He spoke to me in a way that... To Fernandez, they became a kind of art. They are forming themselves. And he produced the Conet Project, a four-CD, four-hour collection of number stations' recordings, which became a cult hit. I'm attracted to the sound of these stations. Excerpts have been used on albums. Their oddness, their musicality. No government has ever acknowledged the existence of number stations. Once, a British official said this. People shouldn't be interested in number stations because they shouldn't be listening to them because they are illegal to listen to. But Fernandez hasn't heard enough and is soliciting first-hand accounts of broadcasters. There's too many questions. He wants to know if the Cold War is over. There really shouldn't be number stations. Why is it still on the air? That was Peter Rosen of KUTV reporting.
Jedna, jedna, jedna. Šest, tři, sedm, dva, šest. Šest, tři, sedm, dva, šest.